Hey everyone, welcome back to AshDev. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to set up a 2D camera in Unity using Cinemachine. By the end of this video, you'll know how to create smooth camera follow, add dramatic camera shake, and keep your camera perfectly confined within your game boundaries. Whether you're a beginner or an intermediate developer, this step-by-step -step guide will have you mastering 2D camera mechanics in no time. So, let's get started. First, install Cinemachine from the Package Manager. Then create a Cinemachine 2D camera. You'll notice it's named Virtual Camera. In Cinemachine, there are various types of cameras like third-person cameras, free-look cameras, 2D cameras. All these different types are created using a virtual camera. Now let's go over the settings of a virtual camera that are important for a 2D setup. In the lens settings, you can set the ortho size. This specifies how much of the scene will be visible to the camera. Next, you need to assign a follow target. This is the object that the camera will follow. Don't worry about the look at setting, it's primarily used for 3D views. Next, we have the body settings, which control the camera's movement. For a 2D camera, we use Framing Transposer. Other algorithms are meant for 3D cameras. Aim settings are responsible for the camera's rotation, but since there's no need for camera rotation in 2D, set the aim algorithm to do nothing. Let's go through the Framing Transposer's settings. First set the appropriate camera angle using the Tracked Object Offset. This will ensure that the camera follows the player and keeps them in your desired position within the frame. Next, you can add damping to make the camera movement smoother, though this will make it a bit slower. X damping affects horizontal movement and Y damping affects vertical movement. Ignore all the Z axis settings, as we are working on a 2D game. The camera's frame includes two zones, the dead zone and the soft zone. Initially, the dead zone won't be visible because its height and width are set to zero. Increase these values to create the dead zone. When the target is within this area, the camera remains stationary. Think of the dead zone as an optimal area where the target should ideally stay. Surrounding the dead zone is the soft zone. As the target enters the soft zone, the camera starts to move, trying to bring the target back to the dead zone. The speed of this movement is determined by the damping you have applied. You can adjust the width and height of the soft zone and move its position using biases. The area outside the soft zone, shown in red, acts as a margin and should remain empty to prevent the target from moving out of the frame entirely. Finally, you can change the position of all the zones using screen X and Y settings to achieve your desired framing view. And lastly, the look ahead settings. These settings help create smoother and more visually appealing camera movements. Set the look ahead time to define how many seconds into the future the camera should predict the target's position. This prediction helps the camera move more fluidly by anticipating the target's movements. The look ahead smoothness controls how smooth this movement will be. Higher values result in smoother motion. However, be cautious not to set the values too high, as this can lead to unnatural viewing angles or erratic movements. You can also disable look ahead for Y movements, as vertical movements are generally simpler and don't require as much smoothing. Before we move on, if you're finding this tutorial helpful, please give us a thumbs up, share it, and subscribe to our channel. Your support keeps us motivated to make more useful and great tutorials. Join our Patreon for access to our tutorial projects. For questions and community support, hop into our Discord server. Links are in the description below. Now let's get back to our 2D camera setup. The camera is working well now, but there's an issue. When the character reaches the edges of the map, the camera goes beyond the map and shows areas outside the intended view. To fix this, the virtual camera comes with an extension called Confiner. It keeps the camera within the map's bounds, but it requires a collider to understand the map's limits. First, add a Cinemachine Confiner extension to your virtual camera. Next, you need to provide a collider that defines the boundaries of your map. For that, create an empty game object and name it Map Bounds. Attach a Polygon Collider 2D to this game object. By default, the Polygon Collider will have the shape of a pentagon. Click the Edit icon to adjust the shape of the collider. Grab the corners and place them appropriately around your map's boundaries. 
For more precise placement, you can adjust the position of each corner in the Component Properties under the Points tab. Here, you can see the position of each corner and the total number of corners. If your map only requires four corners, you can set the size to four. Alternatively, in the editor, you can hold the control key and click on any unwanted edge to delete it. If your map has more corners, simply click on any edge to add a new corner. Once your collider accurately represents the map's bounds, assign this Map Bounds Game Object to the Bounding Shape 2D field in the confiner settings of your virtual camera. If you play it now, you might notice that the game isn't working correctly. This happens because the Polygon Collider we created is colliding with all the other colliders in the map. To fix this, start by creating a new layer and naming it Map Bounds. Assign this new layer to the Map Bounds Game Object. Next, go to the Project Settings and find the Physics Properties. Under the Physics Properties, you'll see the Layer Collision Matrix. Disable all the collisions for the Map Bounds layer to ensure it doesn't interact with other colliders in the scene. Then, return to the Polygon Collider component of the Map Bounds Game Object. In the Exclude Layers settings, exclude everything to prevent any collisions. For added safety, set other layer options to nothing, ensuring the collider doesn't interact with any layers. And now the camera won't go outside the map's bounds. There's another way to avoid collisions by setting the Polygon Collider to Is Trigger, but it caused issues with enemy movement in my game. Alternatively, you can disable the entire game object, which worked for me but could cause problems in some cases. Therefore, the recommended method is to turn off the collisions through the layer settings. Now, let's add some camera shake to enhance the feel of our game. I'll explain briefly how it works. For a more advanced explanation, you can watch the third-person camera tutorial. Although that tutorial is for 3D, the settings are the same for both 2D and 3D. To add camera shake, we'll need two components, the impulse source and the impulse listener. The way this works is that the impulse source sends an impulse signal across the map, similar to a wave. And when the listener detects an impulse wave, the camera shake effect is triggered. Attach the impulse source component to the object you want the shake to originate from, which is the player in our case. Select the default channel for the impulse signal. Next, choose the type of impulse you want to use. We'll go with uniform, which means the impulse signal will travel at an infinite speed and its strength won't fade with distance. Then, select the impulse shape to determine how you want the camera to shake. You can select a preset curve or create a custom one to fit your needs. The velocity setting determines the direction of the shake. By default, it might be set to the negative one in Y-axis, which causes a vertical shake. If you set the Y value to zero and the X value to one, the shake will be horizontal. For this example, let's keep the vertical shake by ensuring the velocity is set to a negative one on the Y axis. And lastly, there's an invoke button that allows you to test the shake. This button only works when the game is in play mode. If your invoke button is not working, that's because you haven't attached the listener yet. So attach an impulse listener to the virtual camera as this is the camera you want to shake. Once the impulse listener is added, select the Apply After setting to specify when the shake should happen. This is an advanced setting, so for now, just select the Noise option. Then, choose the same channel you selected for the impulse source to ensure they communicate properly. The Gain setting allows you to adjust the strength of the shake. Increasing the gain will result in a stronger shake effect. Now, to trigger the shake, in your preferred script, get the reference to the impulse source. Then call the Generate Impulse function from the Impulse Source component wherever you want the shake to occur. This function invokes the impulse signal, and the impulse listener on the virtual camera will respond, causing the shake effect. But don't forget to provide the reference in the editor, and it'll work perfectly. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful and are now ready to enhance your 2D game with a dynamic camera setup. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more Unity tutorials. Thanks for watching.